Greetings fellow humans. You know me as Iceman Caesar, and this is what's up in the world today. Today's video is going to stick with the heavy content and the intense stuff. And it's going to be the story about how God revealed himself to me, and that's going to lead into a little discussion at the end about reality. Now I've told this story to a lot of people over the years face to face, but never really put it down on paper or video or anything, so I'm pretty excited to tell it. Um, this is one of the most significant moments of my life. It totally changed things for me and really nothing's ever been the same for me since this moment in, in a, the best way possible. So let's not waste any more time and get right into it because this is definitely a long story. There's some things I have to set up before we get into it so you can kind of understand just how and why God this, chose this moment to reveal himself to me in. Um, <clears throat> the first thing I need to establish is that around this time I was taking advice from Nate Dogg and smoking weed every day. Rest in peace. Uh, but I had uh, started smoking weed when I was 20, and before that I'd been pretty anti-marijuana. But around this time I was doing more research and found a lot of my arguments had been proven false. So, And plus I was at a crossroads in life, and I was really fed up with my migraines and not actually finding anything that could help. And everybody always said it made things funnier, and I love to laugh, so figured why not. Gave it a shot, and uh, definitely helped with my migraines. It definitely helped make things funnier. So I was all in from that point forward. And uh, so like I, say, like I say, I was smoking weed every day. And how I would approach things is when I had a bag of weed, I wouldn't look at it as I'm going to smoke as much as I can until it's gone. I would look at it as how much can I smoke until I get another one. So I'd make sure I'd have enough for every day and plan it out so that I would get through until I got another bag of weed. And, you know, because I was using it for things like migraines and to help with pain and soreness from my massage therapy job and workouts at the gym and also recreation, but because I was using it for, you know, migraines and stuff like that, I wanted to make sure I had some, to, some every day just to make sure and uh, just to keep things going like that. Um, so that's the first thing I need to establish. Second thing is around this time I had just graduated from massage therapy college and I was looking for an opportunity for a job. And I couldn't, I was having trouble finding one in the city and somebody that responded to my resume was a clinic in Brandon. And Brandon is two hours outside of Winnipeg so I didn't really want to move away from Winnipeg and everything and I didn't know anybody in Brandon but it was just, it sounded like a really, really good opportunity and there was just something in me that was telling me to go for it so I did, made a really out of character decision and just kind of packed up everything, accepted the opportunity and moved, to, moved everything to Brandon. And, you know, that was really out of character for me to, like, just pack up all my stuff and move somewhere where I didn't know one, where I didn't know, no, where I didn't know anybody. Uh, it's not like Brandon is some exotic lo location, but still, I didn't know anybody there. And, you know, I, but I was able to find a little apartment that shared with three other people and had my own bedroom, but we shared the kitchen and bathroom. And I was the only white guy, so it was definitely a different experience there. Uh, but, you know, I, there was two African ladies and an older African gentleman, but we had a great we had a great time. We all got along together and had many, many great conversations with the older gentlemen. So hopefully the three of you are found in good health and happiness and God bless you all. Um, but yeah, so I was living in Brandon by myself. I had taken this opportunity and I was smoking weed every day. Um, and the third thing I need to establish is that I had gotten into a routine of instead of trying to find a reliable a reliable weed dealer in Brandon and you know just dealing with all that drama and hassle that can sometimes go with it and trying to find somebody that's not a scumbag and reliable you can go see regularly just to avoid all that um, I was going back to every two weeks to Winnipeg anyways to see my friends and every see my friends and family so I figured I'd, when I went back on those two weeks I'd buy a big bag of weed take it to Brandon so I'd have enough to get me through those two weeks and then I could go Get, go back to Winnipeg and buy another one and that was my routine it was working working great and that <clears throat> leads things into November two th November 2007 which is where this story starts <clears throat> and November 2007 was a pretty great time uh, it was the Saskatchewan Rough Riders of the CFL had finally built themselves into a team that could contend for the Grey Cup and they had made a uh, made their way into it and that on this weekend on uh, November 20 I think the Grey Cup was on November 25th, and this story starts on Friday, November 23rd, 2007. But they had uh, they fought their way into that game, and but two weeks before, we had one of the best experiences our families ever had. Uh, the Riders hosted a home a playoff game at home for the first time in 19 years, and so you know, Rider pride runs very deep in our family. So we all got to we all kind of came together at my parents in Regina. Went to the game and just had an absolute blast. Uh, me and my brother went to the game without our shirts, all painted green with the S's on our chest. 
And, you know, we always wanted to be those two idiots. Just one time that, you know, those two idiots that went to the football game without their shirts. And that day, I assure you, we were them. It's funny to see the pictures of us in our shirts, without our shirts, and painted up, and everybody in the background with toques and winter jackets. Uh, it was a great time. Just made t so many great memories and just a really awesome experience for our family. But because of that, and, you know, we went... Because of that experience, we went pretty hard that weekend, and I was also in the early stages of building my practice, so money was tight around this time, and so was my stash of weed. So around this uh, this weekend for the Grey Cup fell in between my two weeks of going back to Winnipeg, and money was tight enough where I just couldn't afford to make an extra trip early, and like couldn't make couldn't afford to make that trip to Winnipeg before I got my next paycheck, which was over a week away. So I kind of, uh, my, my choices were the, for the Grey Cup were stay in Brandon and watch it by myself or go to Regina and watch it with my parents because I could make that trip. I didn't really have to spend money when I got there. And it, that was just a much easier trip to make for me. So I was kind of weighing that, weighing that and uh, I was looking at my weed supply and I figured that if I, if I took the weed with me to Regina and, and smoked weed every day while I was there, I wouldn't have enough to get me through the next week until I got to Winnipeg. Like, I'd run out a, a few days before. But I figured if I left my weed in Brandon and just went to what went to Regina without it, by the time I got back, I'd have more than enough to get me through that week. And by, and by the time I got to Winnipeg and got another one. So I was kind of thinking, and you know, I've been smoking weed for a few years at this point. Every day, regularly, didn't really take... There wasn't really need to take any breaks. I mean, it did only did positive things for me. So, and it was helping with my migraines. So, you know, I really didn't see any need to take a break. But I don't know. I just, uh, I just kind of thought about it. And I th around this time, I had been living away from home for a couple years, and I didn't really get to see my parents a lot around this time. So, you know, it was going to be a good opportunity to just have some kind of, you know, one on one time with both of them. And, uh, you know, I've, I just thought that I wouldn't really need the weed for recreation or anything like that. And if, if uh, anything with my migraine did come up, I know my mom has medication. She suffers from the same thing, so I could deal with like that. I don't like to take pills for it, but, it, you know, for this occasion, I figured I could make this happen like this. And so that's what I did. I made the decision to leave the weed in Brandon and just go to Regina without it. And that ended up being one of the most important decisions I'd ever make in my life. But we'll come back to that. So I headed off to Brandon and took a big rip before I left to get me to get me through the drive and headed to Regina, really excited about the Grey Cup. And that leads me into the fourth thing I need to establish uh, for the story, and that is I love valleys. Uh, hills, valleys, I just love them. Everything about them, especially the view from them that you get from them, the bottom, the top, going up, going down, flying over, just... Just, uh, just some of the most breathtaking scenery in, that God's ever blessed us with. It comes from hills and valleys, you know. So, and as a kid, we, we, we did a lot of driving, uh, you know, traveling. And when we go through valleys, I always loved the view of the when the car was going down and you kind of like try and sit up in your seat so you'd get that view of going down. I just always thought that was a really cool visual. And as I got older, I just kind of had the idea of, one day when I was taking the drive on my own, I'd have a camera and I would take, I'd put it on video, put the camera as close to the front of the car as possible so you couldn't see any of the car and then you'd just get the visual of, of, the, car, of the car going down. And I thought that'd be a really cool thing to get and, but man, every single time, once I got my license and I was making trips on my own, every single time I would... Oh, I would, I just, anytime I come up to a valley, I would never remember to get out my camera. And right outside of Brandon, there's a, there's a valley called Grand Valley. And it's a pretty decent sized valley for the prairies. I mean, I'm sure other parts of the world with hills and valleys would look at it as a ditch. But, you know, around here, it's definitely a significant valley. And we did a lot of driving going, you know, we, to see family and friends uh, and plus living in the military and, or my mom being in the military bounced around a lot. So, we were always uh, always doing a lot of driving, and right outside of Brandon, as you head west on the Trans Canada Highway, there's a Grand Valley, and I've always always had that in my head that one day when I was taking that drive, I would put the camera at the front of the car and get that video. But like I say, every time I would, every time I'd come up to that the Grand Valley, I'd always you know I'd be too I'd be baked and I'd be you know I'd be thinking about something or I'd be the, the music would be turned up and I'd be right into it and I'd forget and you know I'd. I'd be remember at the bottom of the valley or coming up the side or just 
I just never remember to take my camera out at, at, in time to get that view. And sure enough, the same trip, the same thing, I forgot. I, I even said before I set out, it's like, man, this is going to be a great weekend. Riders are we're going to win the Grey Cup. I'm going to get this video on the way there. be a good sign. It'll be just be great. But, oh, but I told you, I took that big rip to get me through the trip and I had the tunes cranked. I was excited. I got too into things and forgot. <laughs> totally forgot to take my camera out. And as I'm coming up, I remember, and just, oh, come on. But so I said, I'll get it on the way back. And headed on to Regina. Ended up being one of the best weekends we've we've ever had. Uh, got to experience got to experience a Saskatchewan Rider, Rough Riders Grey Cup win, the first one since 1989. Got to experience it with my parents and my dad's buddies, and it was just just a just so much happiness, and it was just a great great weekend. Got to beat our biggest rivals for the first time we've ever met in the Grey Cup, Winnipeg Blue Bombers 2319. <laughs> All you Bomber fans, <laughs> but uh, it was just <clears throat> one of the best experiences ever, and. Just an awesome, awesome weekend. Never, didn't think about weed once, you know, didn't really miss it at all. And uh, just had a great weekend of family and fellowship. But, as always, once Monday comes around, it's time to go back to reality. And I uh, had to head back to Brandon. <clears throat> so I headed out on the highway, and this time, as my drive back started, now I was starting to miss the weed a little bit. Like I really, I was really wishing I had kind of stashed a little bit for the drive back. Uh, but I was so as I was really, really looking forward to getting back to Brandon and getting this first hoot in three or four days. I was every single kilometer was ticking by very slow, and every minute was ticking by very, very slow. And I was feeling every single bit of that trip. So, but this gave me an idea. It's like. Because I'm in this state and I'm, I'm ready to go and there's no more excuses, I'm going to get this video on the way back. And <clears throat> there, was no, there was no weed to get me baked and have me, you know, zone and like just kind of start thinking about something. And I was going to turn the music down to make sure I wouldn't, it wasn't, wouldn't get too into a song or something. And I was just, there was nothing that was going to hold me back this time. This time I was getting that video. So right, out, right as we're coming up to Brandon, there's a sign that says Brandon is about 30 clicks away. And once you get to that sign, Grand Valley is pretty quick after that. So once I got to the sign, grabbed my camera, turned it on, turned the music down, kind of was sitting up in my seat, and I was ready to go. I was ready to get this video. And, you know, I was excited. I was really, I was really you know, in the moment because, like I say, I was... Hadn't had a hoot in three or four days, stone cold, sober. I was excited. The Riders had just won the Grey Cup for the first time since 1989. And, you know, this was going to be a great cap to my to the weekend. I was going to get, I was finally going to get this video I've been waiting to get for years. Riders win the Grey, Grey Cup. It was just, just going to put the cap on a, a really great experience. So, and now one thing I got to set up here with my friend the whiteboard. Hopefully you can see is that the way the terrain is coming into Brandon on the highway, there's you know, a bunch of little dips in the highway, and then, then you hit Grand Valley. And then as you're coming around, you'll eventually get, and you'll get to the stop sign. So, but the way the highway comes is uh, you're driving, and you hit the few little dips, and then you hit Grand Valley. But the thing is, you can't mistake Grand Valley for the dips. Like, there's just, the Grand Valley, like I said, it might be a ditch to some people, but... It's, a, it's significant enough to these dips to where you're not going to mistake them for each other. Like you can't, you're not going to drive through Grand Valley and think it, think it was a little ditch or anything. So, so I just needed to, needed to set that up. So, okay, so I hit the sign that says Brandon is coming up in 30 clicks. So I'm driving and, you know, I'm coming. And sometimes when you're coming up these little hills, like you can tell it's going to be a little ditch. But sometimes with the way it's angled, you just, you can't tell if it's going to be a little dip or if it's going to be, or if it's Grand Valley. So coming up and every single time I'm coming up, just a little dip. So we're, we're driving and, you know, it's been a few minutes now. And I'm thinking, man, like I really should have hit Grand Valley by now. And, but still, every time we come up a little dip, it, or every time we come up a hill, it would just be a little dip. And... You know, it's getting to the point where I'm like, man, this Grand Valley definitely, I definitely should have hit it by now. This is getting crazy. And but every time, and like I say, you can't mistake these little dips for Grand Valley. It's just, it's just not possible to do that. So, and you know, I'm coming up, but every time, every single time I'm thinking this is, and as we're getting closer, I'm thinking this has got to be it now. Like we're too close. I've been driving for too long. This has to be it. 
we get up but sure enough every time little dip and then finally and as you're coming into Brandon like once you start once you're getting close you can see the traffic lights for the right about the outskirts and the gas station lights and everything and you just know that that's Brandon coming up and but I'm waiting for I know I still need to hit Grand Valley so I can't be coming up to Brandon but sure enough I start coming up the highway and bam there's those street lights, there's the gas station lights, there's Brandon. And man, my jaw just dropped. I just went into almost went into almost went into a state of shock. And I just started, I just I just could not figure out what just happened. Because I was sitting there and I'm waiting to drive through the valley, but I never did, and here's Brandon. So it's like and and lit and like I say, there was no and I'm starting to trying to think of excuses, but there's no excuse for me to fall back on it didn't have any weed the music was off and I was like I say I was right in the moment I was stone cold sober I was excited about getting the video I was sitting up in my seat I had the camera in my hand like I was ready to go for this thing and it was just it never came the, the valley I never the valley never was was not there I didn't drive through it but I didn't miss it so it's <laughs> I just could not figure out and you know I made the made the right hand turn to go into the city Brandon and I was just absolutely stunned got into my part my apartment put my bag down didn't even unpack it just sat on the edge of my bed and just started thinking I just could it was because like there was nothing for, no excuse for me to fall back on there was nothing it was I just could not figure out what happened and the only I mean I even the only thing I started thinking in my head was that maybe there was some construction detour that took us around the valley but this can't happen because you got to drive through the valley no matter what so I was and I, you know, I did searched on Google for any kind of explanation, but there was nothing that I could find. And there was, and I had, like I say, I was, I remember being in the, I was remember being in the moment, and that's why I was so shocked. I just couldn't figure it out. And so for the rest of that night, and you know, in the days and weeks after, I don't want to say it dominated my thoughts, but whenever, whenever, I, whenever I would have a free time, free time to think, man, I, my thoughts would go right back to that moment and trying to figure out what the heck happened. How that how I did not get that video, and there was just nothing. There was nothing I could settle on that would let me think. Okay, you know that was it. That was that was how this happened. There was just nothing. And then one day, uh, on one of the a few weeks later, on one of these drives back from uh, from Winnipeg, I, I was again thinking about this moment. Like, what the heck could have happened, and how could how could this have been? How could it be possible that I didn't drive through the valley, but I didn't miss it, and. All of a sudden, my thoughts started to move to, man, you know what? Maybe, what if this was God reaching out in this moment and revealing himself to me? And man, like when that, thro when that thought crossed my mind, I just got the most craziest, intense energy rush through my entire body. I've never felt anything like that before or after. And it, it didn't hurt or anything. It was, it was like positive energy, but it was just so intense and flow and just... It was so crazy that I just I just didn't feel like I had any control and I almost pulled the, I almost pulled the car over to the side of the road like the second before I made the decision okay I need to pull over it started to slowly dissipate and kind of go back to normal but it was the mo it was one of the most craziest things I've ever experienced and and after that I started exploring that that idea that maybe this is God reaching out in this moment and revealing himself to me and it's like, and you know, every time I tell this story to people, no one believes me. Everything, everybody thinks I'm crazy, and I spaced out, and I missed it, and just somehow I missed it. And you know, but it's funny. Almost, to almost every single person I've told this story to has said the exact same thing, exact words. God just can't take out a valley. And it's just like, and that's the only, the only thing that tells me it didn't happen is that God can't can't take out a valley. But I mean, who are we human beings to say what God and can and cannot do? And it's like God doing that didn't affect, didn't have any effect on really anything. All it had effect on is my reality, and that's kind of where I'll talk about just in a few minutes. But, uh, well, yeah, like I say, like it just affected me and my reality. I guess we'll get into it right now. But uh, <clears throat> so it really made, it really helped me understand how what our reality is and how how our relationship is is with God. And it's like, what happens in your reality doesn't necessarily affect my reality. And so, okay, we have to look at our reality as like our, our, our reality is like a movie. We are the, mo the star of that movie and God is the director. 
So it's like, you know, sometimes people think, how can God be, you know, connected to everybody at the same time? How can he answer, how, how can he be listening to everybody at the same time? Because we're thinking about everybody existing in one reality. We're not thinking that we each of us have our own individual realities that God is the director in, we're the star of the show, and that, but that's the thing, God, we're everything, we're the most important in that, in that reality is it connects to God and Jesus. So it's like, and so in that way, so it's like, there are cars in front of me and behind, behind me as I'm driving, in, as I was driving. I miss the valley, but into the, to the person in front, I don't even exist to them. They don't know Jason Pachkowski. They don't know I was driving in that car. So in their reality, they drive through the valley, and it doesn't affect me at all because I don't even exist to them. I, I know, okay, okay, this is getting heavy, and it's really intense. Hopefully you guys are understand what I'm, what I'm meaning here, but it's like, but that is, that just kind of really helped explain what reality is and how God can do the things that he can do in our lives. And that's the thing. That's the thing about God. He in in our physical world with the way it is, he cannot d disrupt free will even once. If he steps in and changes things and has and and changes free will, disrupts free will, it's over. It's dead. Then free will doesn't exist. Free will means that God can't intervene. He can try and influence us, but he can't disrupt free will. In this moment, he didn't disrupt my free will. He just disrupted my reality. I could have easily turned around and driven back and forth as many times as I needed to until I went through the valley. Like, my free will was not disrupted. All that was disrupted was my reality. And that's, so that's, so it's like, you know, like, it is, if we are, if we are, if our eyes are open and we are, and we are uh, open to God in our reality and thinking about that, then he can have much more of an effect as if we are closed and we are thinking that God can't ever, you know, he's not going to be, I'm not important to him. He's thinking about other people. It's like, but that's not, that's not how it is. We're not all existing in the same reality. Each one of us has our own reality that God has given us and he's the director and we're the star of the show. And that's kind of where it comes into where the soul is because, because of the soul that you are, like that is why our reality is the most important to each of us. Because that's who we, that is who we truly are. But so, you know, starting to get, <laughs> I don't want to get, I don't want to go off the rails here. I've, I've kind of big, you know, I think I've been a little bit intense and kind of crazy enough for this one. But that's, uh, you know, it's just, that's the thing. Everybody tells me that it, there's no way it could possibly happen. And that there's no way God could do this. And that's, that's just how I know it's true. That's, that is like, there's no, there was no, he removed all excuses so it's like, I would have to betray everything I know in my heart and soul. Because I, I was in that moment. I don't just, you know, things just don't happen. I don't just sit around on the edge of my bed and think about things, you know, for days and weeks. It's like, I, I, I was bothered by the fact that I could not figure out how, how, the, like, how I missed that valley. And that, this is, that, that is how I know it's true. And that's where I, it goes back to some of the decisions I made. And that were, it's like, if I had cho if I had chosen to take weed with me to Regina and not leave it behind, this moment doesn't happen. Because I would have wrote it off to being baked. I would have had an excuse. But because I was strong enough to say, you know what, family and fellowship is enough. I don't need to, uh, weed is a crutch for recreation. It's like, if I'm really using it for what I say I am, it's like, I should be able to leave it behind for a weekend and have fun with my parents and not, you know, not use it as a crutch. And that's what I did. And that enabled me to have this moment and for God to reveal himself and like I say nothing is ever, nothing has been the same for me I've just I've been opened up to so many more so much knowledge about the world and spirituality and everything and that's the thing ever and this ever since that day and since I woke up to the fact that God did reveal himself to me I've been able to see the path that he wants me to walk and the things that he wants me to do and he has done things since then to keep me on this path and to keep me moving forward on it. It's like in 2010, I won $84,917 ,917, $84, right at the time where I was about to give up on everything, give up on massage therapy, go into get a job in a factory and start because I had I had lots of serious bills that I needed to pay off. And I just I was about to just give up on on, you know, going after my spiritual my spiritual goals and stuff and just really just buckle down and concentrate only on money and paying off my debt. And what, what did he do? He stepped in, bam, dropped in that big chunk of money. That blessing allowed me to concentrate solely on the spirit, like gaining knowledge about the world and about spirituality and just, 
It allowed me to focus only on his path. And trust me, everybody around me did not agree with that at all. But because he gave me that monetary blessing and I was able to get rid of my debt and I was, you know, buy a car and I didn't have payments and I was able to really keep keep my imprint on things very, very low. And that's why I was able to stay on this path and get to this point where I am now. Things have not been all has been not been sunshine and rainbows at all, you know, like things things that I've desired have not been given to me. I've been had humiliating moments, embarrassing moments, but I wouldn't change everything anything now because I know that I need to be here in this moment doing making this video telling this story um, spreading this knowledge spreading the truth and just doing everything I can to try and get people to be the best versions of themselves and to try and build the best versions of, of society but I, I know this I've know I've gone way too long but this is a long story and I really just wanted to tell it properly and say just get as much of it as as much out there as I possibly can and uh, we'll de I'll definitely go more in depth to the stuff like you know about reality and the relationship between us and God and everything. But you know that, that's definitely enough for today. So thanks everybody for sticking along for the ride. Uh, tomorrow I'm actually going to be uploading a video probably tomorrow because since we're uh, it's uh, 25th anniversary of WWE Monday Night Raw and that's been a big big part of my life so I wanted to make a video and talk about that a little bit so that'll be uploaded tomorrow and then we'll be back to kind of regularly scheduled on Sundays and you know in, in between these first few videos I've definitely felt the inspiration grow so we might be you know getting more more than once a week but definitely going to hit that once a week goal so thanks everybody for coming along for the ride and we'll definitely see you soon down the road much love and God bless peace